Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Comrade Mark Adebayo as a national spokesperson Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Plus TV Africa. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. All Thank right, you for so having me. Hmm. Thank you for joining. We hail D, sir. <laughs> <laughs> like Nigeria, the way we, we just hailed. say Nigeria, we hail D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we're starting with the Vanguard uh, this morning. Okay. So we'll be starting with the Vanguard uh, well, this morning. I, I was responding to the Nigeria, we hail D. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So we're starting it's with more the of a Nigeria, we fail D. Hmm. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> that's very strong words, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep hailing Nigeria oh, and that, that's just that's us being true. patriotic. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get straight into the papers mm. before we start to have a different conversation. <laughs> so this morning we'll be starting with the Vanguard. And the Vanguard leads with one year in office, my government walking the talk. And that is being said by the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Hamed Tinubu. And the writer here says, Fitez, um, Nigerians... For 25 years of unbroken democracy, says we must build a nation for generations unborn. Um, flags of recitation of new national anthem, Nigeria, we hail thee to forward 2024 supplementary appropriation bill soon. And NAS expecting your appropriation bill, Akwabio tells Tinubu. Now, we know that yesterday made um, uh, President Tinubu one year in office, May 29. And then, if you look at the past one year, because he's saying is you know they're walking the talk, um, the past one year has had a lot, you know, that we've had to take in, or a lot of sacrifices that they've termed as some bold moves. Um, one of which is fuel subsidy being gone. In fact, it's a year and one day today when they say fuel subsidy is gone. Another one is you know um, talking about electricity tariff. Another one was a cybersecurity levy that they tried to um, introduce. So there are some bold moves, audacious moves. I don't even think mm -hmm. I should say bold moves anymore. Audacious moves that the president had to take um, and that Nigerians had to just swallow in the, in the guise of having to sacrifice for a better tomorrow. Now, if we were to look at that one year in office and with the president coming out to say, well, walk in the talk, would you agree that truly... Well, walking the talk in this one year, I know certain sacrifices need to be made, you know, if we want a better Nigeria. But do you think those sacrifices are, um, they've been good enough for the better tomorrow that we're looking at? Or do you think that there was a better way we could have even gone through all of that and still achieve the same result? So is President Tinubu's administration walking the talk in one year of being president? Uh, let me start by saying that uh, when we say the government or the president is uh, taking audacious steps, mm. it's more of a daring Nigerians. It's not about being take, taking audacious steps. Audacious step in whose interest? Audacious steps uh, in what area of development can we point at? We are. If you if you want to if you take uh, uh, audacious steps, the audacious step will be that cutting down the size of uh, of government. You know, maybe probably down to twenty ministers cutting down the long convoys of the president and governors and everybody, cutting down uh, salaries and allowances of the president, ministers, governors, and, and the rest of that, that is when we see audacious steps. Not the fact that you see Nigerians continue to sacrifice while the, the, the government is having over bloated stomachs, over bloated budgets, you know, and allowances. That is, that, these ones we have seen, we are, Nigerians are being asked to tighten their bed, tighten, we have been tightening it since 1960. To date. They will say suffer today and enjoy tomorrow. There is no Eduardo anywhere. This crop of leaders are not taking us anywhere that is going to benefit Nigeria, that is going to benefit Nigerians. You know, the other time when we were talking about our old, uh, uh, you know, national anthem, Nigeria, we held it. I was trying to correct the father, look, Nigeria, we failed it. And when I say that, I mean that our leaders have failed Nigeria. Nigeria has not failed us as a people. Nigeria has given us oil, Nigeria has given us water, Nigeria has given us wonderful weather all year round, Nigeria has given us good soil for agriculture and everything, Nigeria has given us everything that we need, Nigeria has given us gold bauxite and every other natural resources that we need. Nigeria has given us humongous 
human natural human resources. All these that has given to us, we the, our leaders have failed in using and uh, implementing for our own interest and for the national progress of Nigeria. That is why we say Nigeria we failed it. Nigerian leaders have failed Nigeria. So there is no audacious step in the area where there's insecurity in this Abuja. You know, the activities of one chance, one chance cleaners has increased from like 30 uh, percent during uh, Buhari to like 75 uh, percent now. You know, kidnapping on a uh, daylight kidnapping right inside Abuja, you know, at the center of Abuja, not in the suburbs. These things are happening in the area of security. The government has failed in the area of the economy. The government has a 33.5 percent inflation rate. We are in the area of look at the current the, the Nigerian currency. The Benin Republic currency now is stronger than our Naira. That was what when, when I was growing up in the 70s. If you took one Naira and enter the Republic of Benin, you will see what you are going to buy. The, 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 not that they respected the Naira then, they worshipped the Naira. Any, we are any in Africa, they worship the Naira. The Naira to the dollar was, uh, uh, I mean, uh, less than one Naira was to one dollar, about 70 something Naira to, 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 yeah. to about uh, seven, something less than one Naira to the dollar in the 70s, even in the 80s. The way Sagari came and uh, began to go, that was when we began to, to experience all these things. What we are saying is that the audacious steps have not been, the audacious actions have more been on the side of punitive policies of government to inflict more pain, hunger on Nigerians. Not in a way that is beneficial to Nigerians or to, to, to Nigeria. That is it. You Today, if the president announces that, look, he's cutting down salaries and hours of government officials, where at the federal level by, say, 50 or 60 percent, that is an audacious step. But if the, if the government says, look, go, um, we 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 will ensure that salaries and allowance, allowances of workers are increased and less of that you know minimum of two hundred and fifty thousand naira for minimum wage will have been something like we call audacious step audacious step in what state that the naira is collapsing we have thousand five hundred and around one thousand five hundred one thousand six hundred you know fluctuating like that you know we don't have a stable currency we don't have a stable economy our our security is down 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 there and then somebody tells me he's taking the audacious step in whose interest. Uh, uh, in whose dress are we taking all these audacious steps? Yeah, there is more. The cost of living well, is far higher today than it was last year. Yes. From the first minute of the president's uh, oath taking inauguration, uh, for the first 60 minutes, hmm. fuel prices increased by 600 percent. Within one minute of President Putin's inauguration, the economy, everything went to crisis. To date, we are yet to recover from that. So well, you should take audacious steps to reverse these negative trends. You know, to support Nigerians, to cushion the effect of the incessant you know, subsidy remover that was totally unnecessary. You know, so those are the, those are those will be the uh, let them crash the uh, the fuel pump prices of fuel to just in fact by half, like say uh, three hundred naira. Today you see what is, Nigerians are going to start celebrating that we have taken additional steps. But the steps they have taken, the neoliberal policies of this government so far have only benefited the rich and the powerful and those who are in government. But the man on the street, the masses, the Nigerians ourselves, you know, the, the, the food has been taken off the tables of millions of Nigerians. We should not deceive ourselves. Mm. The, we do not, we, we should expect the government to score itself high in, in the face of overwhelming evidence of failure. They will continue to score themselves high. But for us as Nigerians, for us as a people, for us as patriots, we must not deceive ourselves. We must be able to say that now, bread that used to sell for 200 naira is now 900 naira. That a cup of bread that used to sell for 300 naira is now 1,200 naira. That, uh, you know, we should be able to say that Gary, the best friend of the common man, Gary, mm. the best friend of the common man, has been, has, has started alienating the common man, even from, from himself. Gary is no longer for the common man, no. You know, so, in those so there days, were two you go and buy your office, don't send your message. Just you highlight here. Gary, yeah. Okay, so there are two things, I mean, oh. listening to you, there are two things you said that I would like to just highlight here, which is um, the president's assuming office, things have just, you know, there's been a cascade of so many um, policies and why things have been really expensive. But this same government will tell you that they inherited this <laughs> government, you know, from well, the past well, administration. Well, and so that's the reason why we're here, that other presidents have probably made wrong moves 
which has now led to where we are today. The second one is talking about fuel subsidy. If fuel subsidy was able to come down, in Nigeria, do things really do? If, for instance, a price goes up, do things really come down? So even if we have fuel subsidy, um, um, because obviously right now there's it's still a quasi subsidy. I don't think fuel is we're paying for the actual amounts, especially when you see that dollars rising, um, and then the fuel pump, the pump price is still the same. So there's still a quasi subsidy. But if the president was to come out boldly and say yes. Um, was subsidizing this and maybe bringing it down to about 300 naira, like you've said, do you think that would affect the prices of goods and services in Nigeria? All Nigerians would just say, this is where we are, this is the you know, price we want to label on our goods, and that, that's it. Well, um, well the, the, the line was uh, breaking very badly, but I, I was able to you know, uh, get some of the things that you said. But the first thing I want to say is that uh, you know, we, when, we, when are we going to stop this cycle of blame game? Mm -hmm. uh, blame the last government. We already blame Jonathan for eight years. For his own non-performance, for his own failure. We already blame Jonathan for eight years. The, uh, the last eight years was of APC. This is an APC government. So they want to start blaming their own APC government for the next four years or three years or whatever. And God forbid for another seven years. No. Did, did the president run for presidency on the premise of the performance of the last government you are not going to score your government on the on the scorecard of the last government you have to write your own exam you have to fail your own exam or you pass it you don't blame you don't blame the last government you know because, because it is assumed that before you go into presidency before you run for president before you run for office you understand the challenges you understand the problems you, you have the solutions to all these challenges before you say you want to run for presidency we all know that the Wari government was a disaster. We are only hoping that this one will not even be more disastrous. So you cannot say they inherited this, they inherited that. You knew you were coming to inherit something. You knew it. When you go to the market to buy a rickety car, an old car, a Nigerian overused car, you know all the problems are going to be there. You must be able to have the capacity to fix the problem before you go to the market to buy it. You don't come to tell us after running for presidency and saying laws that you are going to give us renewed hope. Now you are ruining the home. You are destroying. You are destroying the hope, and then you are telling me, you telling us that you tell this. You didn't know, you didn't do your own work to understand mm. that you are going to inherit all these problems before you came into office. Mm. So, well, they, they, you know, they, we cannot continue they to engage in this uh, cycle of blame. They have said they are doing a lot of things. The last um, um, in fact, on the daily independence, he has asked Nigerians to work together to build the nation. Mm. Says no amount of aid from abroad can help Nigeria. So we're, we're asked that one is to, funny. Still, to yeah. still tighten our belts yeah. even more. So guess what? You still have to sacrifice a lot more. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm sacrificing a lot already. But and they say they're, they're going to give palliatives. They're going yes. to continue the... The 75,000 yeah. naira. So I don't know whether I will reach you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting um, you. Uh, I don't know that. Yes, go ahead, sir. That one, that one is an audio promise. Wow. You are not going to see the future. <laughs> you are not going to see the future. And uh, don't think uh, nobody should go and rest saying, claim, taking that. Uh, they have been promising palliative for one year. Nobody has got anything. They said they'll bring CNG, they do this or that. Look, don't, we should never predicate our expectations on the promises of, of any politician, whether the president or governor or whatever. You need, you need to go near these people and see whether they are tightening any belt or anything. You can see them, they are getting bigger, their stomachs are getting fatter. They don't really understand what Nigerians are passing through. These people are too... Far, they are disconnected from the, from Nigerians. They are disconnected from the streets. You only see them on the streets on, on the, during the time of campaign. They are coming back in three years. That is when we should punish them for their misdeeds and, and bad governance they are giving us. So uh, they will do this. They will, they will release twenty something billion. If you say they should not take foreign aid, what is the local aid that you have for them? What is the internal aid that you have for them? What is the internal support that we have from our government? What is the what, what are they doing to make sure that uh, prices of food food to be affordable to the common man. What are they doing to, to ensure that the children of the common people, uh, the regular Nigerians, are able to go to school? What are they? You know how many, how many out of school children now? Immediately there was all of us who have children in private schools and rest of that. Even in government schools, even the federal government increased uh, increased vision in, in federal in, in, in school in federal government schools. That was why last year uh, students of you know, University of Lagos were protesting. And what did they do? They sent police after them to begin to shoot 
tear gas and, uh, uh, and gun at them. You understand? So, all you talk of private institutions, what is the government? This government, I've said it before, if you want to do palliative, nobody is asking for cash out because the 75,000 naira will go into, into billions of naira into the pockets of politicians and people who are asked to implement that policy like we, that was that was discovered. The, that Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs Affairs is, uh, is not humanitarian at all. It's not humane. Uh, so, you know, a lot of... If they now begin to probe what happened in that humanitarian ministry under Buhari, oh my goodness, it will be a terrible scandal, it, uh, almost at the level of uh, Eme Fieli. You understand? So, uh, that, look at the new one that just came in that was fired, that was uh, suspended, you know. They say it's a humanitarian affairs ministry, but it's so so many inhumane personnel are running that place. So, we are. Not, they should not go into cash out, President Dubai Tassana, to anybody. Because it's not going to get to the people that really need the money. It's not going to get to them. What you need to do is to cut tuition fees in schools by half. By half. Tell uh, parents not to pay for school while, while for the next two, three years. That is direct palliative. You know, that is direct palliative. Once you take care of our children's education, you take care of uh, uh, the education, then you take care of health. Let us give Nigerians moratorium, go to any public health institution and, and, and get free medical services. That is direct palliative. Tell Nigerians that, okay, from now, okay, we are going to pay YX, well, the white fees for the next two, three years. That is direct palliative. Okay, you tell Nigerians that, okay, from now on, uh, we, we we are cutting tuition fees by, by half. Even the private institution will be forced to follow suit including the crazy ones that are changing dollars in Nigeria. They, they, this is, these are the kind of schools and, and proprietors that EFCC should go after. They are committing economic crime by charging dollars. When Nigeria is our legal, when Naira is our legal tender in our own country, you have to look for dollars to pay for your children's school. It is criminal, it is inhumane, it is antisocial and anti-people and uh, absolutely unpatriotic. Whoever is doing that should not be treated as a Nigerian. It's, it, it, it's, it's more is more of a foreigner than a Nigerian and is, is committing is an economic criminal charging dollars and pounds in Nigeria for tuition. Why now? Why? Are we, are we going to say that education is no longer for the poor? Like they said, like the, the Nigerian politicians are, I want to say, sometimes they say communication, even food, the asset is not for, for the common man. Uh, traveling is all, aeroplane is not for the common man. So everything will just go to rich people. And the way this country is being run, sincerely, I just hope that uh, uh, the government and the people in power will not provoke a system that they will not be able to, to contain. That is just it. But the, the beauty of democracy is that you have four years to make another choice. And I think we should get it right this the next time. We should get it right. That yeah. is it. Well, if there will be a, a, a revolution in Nigeria, it has to be political revolution. It has to be democratic revolution in, by, in a way that we produce, we reproduce something akin to that of Senegal. Looking for a very young person without any ego, without any uh, you know, uh, attachment to the apartments of offices, but to, to, to sit up and do the duty. I, I, I pray and hope that that young man in, in Senegal will be, will be successful so that we have a reference point. Look at Nigeria today. You may say the governors are this and that, but you cannot say the same, the same negative and pejorative expressions that we used to describe Nigerian uh, uh, governors with uh, Alessoti of Abia. Alessoti of Abia is transforming a state that was backward, that was retrogressive, is transforming a state in the area of power, in the area of roads, in the area of education, in the area of taking governance and the benefits of democracy to the grassroots to the people. That's why you can see him. He, he doesn't have to go around with the retinue of soldiers and policemen. He, he is free among his people. He is doing the work. That is the man that we can say is walking the talk, not the president, parliament, Tinubu, mm -hmm. that has put us in terrible economic situation that a lot of people cannot afford. You know, the cost of living in Nigeria today has skyrocketed by over 500% in the last one year. So you cannot say you are walking the talk. You say you, re you want to renew our hope. We believe you. Mm -hmm. Some of us in the opposition believe the president. We believe at least that he was more that he was more politically educated, he was more politically exposed, experienced, and has as an accountant has an understanding of the economic nitty-gritty of governance and that he was coming to Babon far better than Baba Goslo. Now we have moved from Baba Goslo under Buari to Baba do nothing. I mean, you know, everything is just like Vela would say, we are walking, we are walking, we are speeding backwards. So if they are walking, they are walking backwards. They said they would hit the ground running. Yes, you can see. 
the president the last one year keeps the ground and has been running backward, ru running in the wrong directions. It must begin to run in the right. We should not come here and begin to uh, patronize the government that has not done so well. Do you, know, you know how many jobs have been lost in the in the la go and see the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics? How many jobs have been lost? How many businesses have collapsed last one year? During the course of one the CVN, single, the CVN just sacked six hundred. The CVN just sacked six hundred staff just yeah. now. The CBN of all. Uh, institutions such 600 staff well, I'm, how, wondering, how, I'm wondering when they can do that and how come the government is not trying to cut their own costs and mm. we still have a bloated cabinet mm. so if they're taking jobs from people then why are you employing so many people just to take jobs from others but i don't know uh, uh, maybe yeah, maybe yeah, cupp yeah, has one, uh, has a solution well, uh, sir. one minister we have 300 uh, paid uh, personal assistant we have a uh, private assistant they will have 20 uh, executive no uh, executive assistant personal assistant general assistant government <laughs> assistant criminal assistants all over the place how do you, you you are telling people look that's what i don't want to mention it but that's one hotel in lagos too that is firing more than 90 uh, about 75 percent of his staff this week their letters are ready this is not speculation i don't want to mention him but yeah i'm sure you, your 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 station will get the news and will be part of the people that are going to break the news you understand uh, and then uh, i'm looking at those workers some of them are, have been there for 20 years some of them have been there for 25 years some of them are young people who just joined the workforce in le less than six months ago now they say, well, you are firing 75 to 80 percent of your workforce. What do you think is going to happen to those people? Where, what job are they going to get? They are, and then the experience they have built over the years to keep that hotel running and keeping the tradition of excellence is going to collapse. And it's not only that; just just that's just one example. You know, people are losing jobs, businesses are collapsing because people can no longer. You know, a lot of people that can no longer access the dollar. Who cannot who can no longer afford the dollar, their businesses are collapsing. Even eateries have shut down. Eateries lose over five billion naira um in the last one year. Eateries are shutting down. So even food, people are not even able to go to eateries and buy food like they would. I was uh, out Itri, yesterday. Itri, Itri, and my, someone the I today, went out with I didn't see them as uh, as uh, as uh, yeah, I was out for a drink yesterday and, Pardon? you know, the, the other person was saying, why is everywhere empty? Like, people are not coming to, you know, restaurants or lounges anymore because they cannot afford it. So everyone is cooking at home. And even cooking at home, you don't even have enough money to buy three square meals. To buy gas. You know how much gas, how much, uh, you know, today now, you know, I, I haven't noticed something. I haven't noticed a trend that to, now... You are seeing more men going to buy things by themselves in the market yes. nowadays because they believe they think that their wives are cheating them. <laughs> cheating them. They say, ah, how can that people they go and buy gas by themselves? They are going to market to buy gas by themselves. They are going to market to buy oil for You will see that in the, the number of when you go to the market now, you see that ah, what are men doing in the market? Buying things when they are coming from work. Uh, hello, uh, there, we we'll send money for oil. We say, I'll buy it when I'm coming from work. I want to buy rice. Rice has been, I'll buy, I'll buy when I'm coming from work because. Suddenly they began, men began to suspect their wife. Well, let me, I don't have that kind of tradition. I, I'm not used to the oh marketplace. It's not, I don't care how much you buy it. I just pray that God will continue to provide for me to provide for my, my family. And yours too. Now, the reality on ground is that um, the government must be sincere with us. Yeah. And, and something, you know, something that is funny that I know is that you know that this president, this president Tinubu, you know that he can fix these situations. This guy has the capacity to fix the economy. He has the capacity to fix the security. He has the capacity to fix the, the, all the social crises. But the problem he's having is that he doesn't have the political will to do all these things. And one of the reasons is that probably because he's playing to the gallery of some international, you know, conglomerates, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who are, you know, now asking him to implement neoliberal policies that is anti-Nigeria, but it's favorable to the global financial conglomerates. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the time he finishes his presidency, he should know that the, the people that are going to judge him, the people that are going to assess him, the people that are going to rate him, are not the Americans, are not the Britons, are not the French. They are, we are still going to be Nigerians. It, it is now left for him to decide whether to cast his name in stone and in gold or on the sand of history that will be blown away by the wind. I wish him the best of luck, but more importantly, I wish Nigeria the best. And I believe one day this potentially great giant of Africa one day Amen. shall arise and walk and, and soar. And all of us will be proud to be Nigerians. Our okay. green passport uh, this, shall be. This is not a headline. But this is one not a headline, sir. Um, I'm just wondering as we, we are wrapping up uh, in, a, in a bit. Um, the CUPP 
is not necessarily um, an opposition political party. It's a, it's a coalition of all the political parties. Now, you were raising some concerns and saying, uh, hoping that Nigeria will get to a place where we don't have to complain about a lot of these things. But how do we get there? Where the nation, when the National Assembly seems to just be working for the president, uh, in fact, virtually all of them wear the signature cap of the president, showing mm -hmm. that they are loyal and they will continue to be loyal. Someone who raised an alarm in, in the National Assembly was suspended for three months. Even the opposition party didn't say much about it. And he's just being pardoned and brought back right now. Uh, the supplementary budget is going to be sent to the National Assembly and everything is just, okay, you're, Mr. President, you're doing well. And one of the riders of this question we're asking uh, was that the National Assembly is saying that they are so satisfied mm. with the performance of the president. So if the National Assembly that should critique the president yeah. and his government is saying they are satisfied, then what do you think can be done by the people who are not National Assembly, who are not the presidency, who are not people in government right now, with the experience of CUPP and the uh, vision of CUPP? What can you tell Nigerians? Well, um, when you have a rubber stamp National Assembly, and these are supposed to be the representatives of the people. I told you the other time that these people are disconnected from the realities of the suffering of the people. They are not really, they, 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 there, is, there is that disconnect, that, that mass disconnect from the realities, from the suffering of the people, from the experiences of the people. So they are not really representatives of the people. When you hear representatives of the people who have been kidnapped, who are hungry, who don't have food on their tables, who their children are out of school, whose children are losing their jobs and the rest of that, saying kudos to the president, you are doing well, you are doing well. You know, can see, this, it shows that Nigeria is a captured nation. And... Uh, uh, it's quite of I think what we need to do as an, as an opposition coalition and for the human rights uh, community is for us to to protest more, to call uh, out powers that be on what they are not doing right. I think we need to be more aware of our responsibilities in the area of our opposition activism to put uh, this government on its foot to work for the betterment of the people. There is a big squad there. At, uh, at the National Assembly, where you have uh, this uh, African salute arm um, uh, surrounded by, you know, uh, the sign of justice, that area is covered for Nigerians to go there and protest and make their intentions known to our representatives. I think we should we should take full advantage of our democratic rights to begin to let people, these people know that uh, they are no longer representing the interests of the people that elected them to go uh, to the National Assembly. You cannot be telling this government that is doing well, thereby encouraging it to be performing worse than it is. And I expect that your people will welcome you back home. I remember, uh, I think, um, uh, 2020, uh, was it 2019 or 2020, when one uh, honorable went back to his, uh, his constituency and he was told his jeep was, because he didn't go back there for a long time. He abandoned them, you uh, know, and then he went there and his people began to stone, stone him. And he had to run for himself. He was lucky to escape with his life. His house was burned and everything. Well, uh, I hope that this situation will not bring out the beast in Nigeria. I just hope that we just... The best thing for people to do is that there is another opportunity in three years. We should get it right at that time. You know, that is why I'm, I'm talking about political revolution, not necessarily crisis revolution, because when you engage in crisis revolution, mob action and everything, at the end of the day, it is in the, it is in the ruling clique that will take over our government, and the people generally will lose. Anywhere in this area that have been, uh, have been revolution, it is still the ruling clique that will come over and take over the governors. And people. look at the, the, the Tunisian experience of uh, the Arab Spring. There's nowhere in the Arab world that people, that the masses succeeded in taking over government. It's still the same class of people that went back there. So I don't believe in all this mob action, all this crisis, let us burn down everything. Hey, okay, no, 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 no. Well, we then let, then let, let us engage in you know, intelligent, democratic, political revolution, now. whereby this crop of leaders are thrown away by the ballot and then we get the right people into government. That is where we can get things right in this country. Well, we get the right people into government and we get every, every other thing right. Yeah. That is it. We hope that, you know, they start to do what's right now because you said we can have another chance in three years. Three years is a long time. So let's just hope and pray. And, you know, we're talking. We, the moment, the, when we keep having these conversations that they hear of, 
hopefully it starts to sink in and they know that they need to do right by Nigerians and just do better in general because at the end of the day, everyone wants what is better for Nigeria because this is the country that we have. We don't have anywhere else we're going to. So we hope that, yeah, they start to do the, the right work when they're, you know, walking the talk, it should be a good walk <laughs> and a good talk. But this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much, sir, for coming to review the papers with us. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you, Prosivia Africa. You are doing well. Uh, see you sometimes much later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we've been speaking with Comrade Mark Adebayo. He's a national spokesperson coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. And we've just been reviewing the papers. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.